Hey, a friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Welcome to day 18 in our Newbie to Ninja series here on the channel and website. We're gonna help you go from being a beginner in Logic Pro to become an expert, fully comfortable and capable to get right down to making awesome music in this amazing application. Yesterday, we explored managing different takes across your tracks and projects using Logic Pro's take folder and quick swiping system. And take folders makes it effortless for you to quickly comp together your perfect composite takes. But as noted at the end of yesterday's video, unfortunately at this time, quick swipe comping is not available if you're working with a take folder that's made up of different MIDI takes. Luckily, Logic Pro also offers a second system for recording and testing out and comping together your different ideas. And these are called track alternatives. Track alternatives can be used with any track type, but prove to be especially useful when you're working with different recordings and performances with software instrument tracks. So today we're gonna to record three different software instrument ideas to three different track alternatives, which will allow us to see how powerful track alternatives can really be. First, let's take a listen to this riff that I have here, and then we'll start to lay down some ideas. Okay, so pretty chill, pretty low key, also a little spooky. From here, let's lay down our first idea on this track lane that's called Giant's Doorbell. This is a preset in the quick sampler instrument that comes with Logic Pro. If we open the inspector and click on quick sampler, we have another fantastic instrument when working with single samples in Logic Pro. I'll close the instrument and the inspector and let's start recording. I'll press R on my Mac's keyboard to begin recording. Here we go. All right, we've now laid down our first idea to this track. We can see the region in our project, but for us to be able to record a new idea to the same track, we need to be able to set aside this performance. If you see to the right of each track name, there's this double arrow icon, which is the track alternatives menu. If we click on this menu and then select new from the dropdown, our performance has disappeared, but it's not gone, it's not deleted. Instead, we have a brand new track alternative for this track lane. If you take a look now next to the track alternative menu dropdown and the name of the track, we now have a letter, which in this case is the letter B, which indicates that we are now looking at a different track alternative for our track. At this point, I can lay down a new idea to the same track lane and then flip between the two different ideas back to back. But of course, you might not see this option for the track alternatives menu in your projects. So what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna use key command option and T to bring up the track header component menu which allows us to show and hide different functions from the track headers, such as track alternatives. By hiding the track alternative option, most of the track headers don't offer the option for track alternatives, except for those tracks that already have track alternatives living on them. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff in the track header component menu that you can show and hide from your track headers, but for today, we're just gonna focus on track alternatives. Okay, now let's lay down our second idea. Here we go. Okay, we've got our second idea down. I played a series of chords. Let's go back to the track alternative menu. Let's create another new track alternative. And let's lay down a third idea. So now we have three different ideas that we can test out and play around with for our riff. Let's go back to the track alternatives menu and click, and let's switch between our three different alternatives. First, we have C, which is the most recent, then B, and our first performance would be A. And whichever track alternative that we select from the dropdown is the alternative in focus, which will be what we hear during playback. So let's take a listen to A.
And then we could focus on B. And C. Right, it's as easy as working with take folders. You just select which track alternative from the drop down menu that you want to focus in on and you just hit play. And then you can listen to that alternative in the context of your project. From here, there's a lot more that you can do. Let's click on the track alternative menu again. Let's swap to that of our first performance. Next, let's rename each alternative to something more descriptive. So I'm gonna click on rename and I'll rename this to spooky. Then I'll go back up. I'll click again to then select B. I'll double click on the letter or name for that track alternative. This allows us to type in a new name. I'll call this chords. And for C, I'll double click again on the name to name this Spooky2. And we can see that the name is starting to get cut off. So I'm gonna move my mouse to the right edge of the track headers to drag this out a little bit. So now we can see more of the name for that track alternative. Right, so this is fantastic. We can record as many ideas as we want to a single track lane and then flip between those different ideas with a click of a mouse. And each time that we wanna lay down a new idea, we just go to that drop down menu and select new to create a new track alternative which clears the track lane, allowing us to record our next idea. But at a certain point, you may wanna be able to see all the alternatives that you've recorded without having to go to this menu to select each individual take. Well, if we go back to the track alternative menu, click, we have this option to show the inactive track alternatives. So if we click this, check it out, we now see the alternative in focus, our new alternative that we didn't record to, plus our two other alternatives. So the alternative in the main track lane here is the one that's in focus and the one that we will hear when we play back. But if we hover our mouse over these power buttons in each track alternative, this is the preview alternative button. If we click on it, the focus of playback for our track is now focused in on this track alternative right here. So if we take a listen, And we can flip between playback of any alternative just by clicking once again. And if we decide that we like one alternative the best over all the others, we can just click on this arrow button to the left, which is the activate alternative button. When we click, we swap whichever alternative is in the main track lane for this different alternative. In this case, making our chords performance our chosen alternative for this track. In this current view of showing inactive track alternatives, if we right click or hold control and click on any track alternative track header, we can choose to rename or even delete a track alternative. And once you've decided on a track alternative that you think is the best for your project, and you don't need to look at these inactive takes anymore just because they're taking up space, but you want to keep them, you don't want them to be deleted, you just want to hide them. Well, we just go right back up to the track alternative menu. And at the bottom, we can now hide the inactive track alternatives. Awesome, we've reduced the clutter in our project, but we still have those track alternatives if we decide we need them later on. But if you're really committed to your chosen track alternative and you're convinced you're not going to need those other alternatives, well, we can go back up to that menu, click, and we can choose to delete the inactive alternatives. Looks like nothing happened, but if we go back to the dropdown, we don't see our other alternatives listed, and we can't show the inactive because we deleted those inactive alternatives. All right, I'm gonna use key command, command and Z to undo deleting these track alternatives. And I'm gonna go back to the menu and show the inactive. Another really helpful feature of track alternatives is that you can duplicate an alternative. When we duplicate a performance, this makes it really handy for us to edit or change a performance or recording while still preserving the original performance and recording, just in case later on we decide we don't like those edits or changes. So I could go to this duplicate version of Spooky, open the Piano Roll Editor by pressing P on my Mac's keyboard, and we can move maybe these three high notes up an octave. I'm gonna use Shift, Option, and Up Arrow 
to bump these up. And let's take a listen. All right, I can definitely say I'm not convinced of that change for that performance. If we go to the drop down arrow, unfortunately, we cannot delete this track alternative at this track lane. We could, of course, just select the region and press delete on our Max keyboard. And then we could promote this version. Or we could just right click on the track header, on this empty track header now, and delete the track alternative. Lastly, I wanna show you how you can edit different performances together using track alternatives. For example, I'm really happy with this first Spooky performance, but maybe I wanna combine the first half of Spooky 2 with the second half of the original Spooky idea. Well, let's go back to the track alternative menu, click, let's duplicate. So now we have a backup of our idea in case we decide we don't like this change. And I'll hover my mouse on the left edge of this region so then I can adjust the length of the region. And from here, I'm gonna use my marquee tool using the marquee tool click zone and select the first half of Spooky 2. And I'm going to click on the region. Now I've split up the first half from the second half, but of course we could select both halves and press J to join them back together. But I'm going to move this first half up to the D track alternative by holding option, clicking and dragging to copy. All right, we can even join these two together by selecting both regions and then pressing J. And let's take a listen. Just like that, we've made edits to two different track alternatives. We combine them together, and now we have a single performance based on these two different ideas. And we can make edits to each individual region of each track alternative as well. In this case, I'm adjusting the boundaries. For this one, I can open the piano roll editor and make further adjustments. And this can be applied to any of the track alternatives. And lastly, if you like one of these ideas for a different track lane, well, we can just move it to a completely different track. So I hope you can see between take folders and track alternatives, you have so many tools at your disposal to record, test out, and even combine different ideas for your projects. All right, thanks so much, and I'll see you for more next week in our Newbie to Ninja series. Take care.